channel once again. Today we have a question on matrices that we are going to solve. Given that T is a matrix, which is this, with all the elements, you can see it's a 3 by 3 matrix. They say we should find the smallest value of X for which the matrix T is singular. Okay, so to solve this given problem, the first thing we need to know is that a singular matrix the determinant is always equal to 0. So the determinant of this matrix T will give us 0, right? Now, we bring in all the elements of the matrix, this x plus 1, 3, 5, 2x plus 2, 5, and 2, 3, and x plus 4, and the determinant should give us 0. Now, to find the determinant, the normal way is to use this sign, plus minus plus the cofactor method, right? And so, we we'll take the first element in the first column, right, which is x plus 1, and we find the minor matrix of this element. Now, what is the minor matrix? When we close the rows, when we close the row and close the column, we find that this is the minor matrix. So we bring it and multiply it with this element. So we have x plus 1, and it is going to multiply this minor matrix x plus 2, 5, 3, and x plus 4. Now you can see the plus sign attached to this first element, so we we'll put the plus here, but it's not relevant. The next element, which is on the second column, is 3, and there's a sign attached to it, which is minus, right? Based on the cofactor, this thing. So we'll now bring the minus. So we we'll have minus 3, and we'll multiply it with the minor matrix of this element. What is the minor matrix? Let's see. When we close this row to which this element belongs, and we close the column, we are left with 2, 5, 2, and x plus 4, right? So we have it to be 2, 5, 2, and x plus 4. We are multiplying everything with minus 3. Then finally, the third element, which is on the third column, is 5. And it has a plus sign attached to it, it's positive. We will now find the minor, the minor matrix of this element, which is 2, x plus 2, 2, and 3. I'm breaking it down here so that we can now expand. Now remember to equate everything to 0 because it is a singular matrix. We are in the process of finding the determinant of this matrix, so we are expanding, right? Now we have x plus 1 into this minor matrix. Now, we also know that to solve this, we need to find the determinant of this matrix. This is a 2 by 2 matrix. And if you have a matrix, for example, let's say a, B, C, D. A 2 by 2, and you are told to find the determinant, which is going to be what? A, D, that's A times D, minus C, D. So that is exactly what we are going to do. We find the determinant of the minor matrix that will multiply it with this, and that is, is going to apply for the whole of this. So we are going to have X plus 2 multiplied by X plus 4, which is this, minus what? 3 times 5. And this will give us 15. Remember, all of them is going to multiply x plus 1. Then we move on to this second part. We have minus 3 into what? Now, to find the determinant of this minor matrix, we have 2 times x plus 4. That is 2 into x plus 4 minus 2 times 5, which is 10. Then finally, plus to find the determinant of this minor matrix again, we have what? 2 times 3, which is 6, minus 2 times x plus 2. So we now have 6 minus 2 into x plus 2. And everything is equal to 0. Why is it equal to 0? Because it's a singular matrix. Now, we can see that these are two expressions. We are going to expand this bracket. And when you expand, you get x squared plus 6x plus 8, right? And everything is minus 15. And we still have another expression outside. Then minus 3 into, when we expand this, 2 times 10 give us 2x, then 2 times 4 give us 8, minus 10. Then plus 5 into 6 minus 2 times x will give us minus 2x, and then minus 2 times 2 will give us minus 4, and everything is equal to 0. Simplify further, we have what? We'll collect the right terms. So 8 and 5 are like constant, we don't have any variable f attached to them. So 8 minus 15 will give us minus 7. I'll bring everything down. Then minus 3 into, also for the like terms here. 
So 8 minus 10 will give us minus 2. So we'll be left with 2x minus 2 inside the bracket. Then plus 5. And then we'll have what? 6 minus 2x minus 4. So 6 and minus 4 are like terms. And we bring them together. 6 minus 4 gives us 2. Then minus 2x equal to 0. Expanding this bracket, you get what? You get the whole of this. x cubed plus 6x squared minus 7x plus x squared plus 6x minus 7. When you expand the whole of this, so we are done with that side. Now for this side, minus 3 times 2x will give us minus 6x. And minus 3 times minus will give us plus 6. The sign changes. Then we have plus 5 times 2 will give us 10. And plus 5 times minus 2 will give us minus 10x. And everything is equal to 0. So we continue. Now, simplify for that, we collect like terms. Now, you can see that x3 is on its own here. It's the highest power of x in this equation, right? So we bring x3 down. Now, x squared has brothers here. How many brothers? Just one. So we collect like them. So 6x squared plus x squared will give us what? We give us 7x. 7x squared. Right? So let's cancel out all the ones we work on. Now we also have x. So minus 7x has a brother plus 6x and also it has minus 6x and minus 10x. So this minus 6x can go with plus 6x. We will now have minus 7x minus 10x which will give us minus 17x. Finally, what are we left with now? We are left with 6 plus 10 and what? Minus 7. So 16 minus 7 gives us plus 9 is equal to 0. So after all the simplification we've done, we are now left with this expression. This expression is our determinant and it is a polynomial x cubed plus 7x squared minus 17x plus 9 and it is equal to 0 because this is a singular matrix. Remember, the problem is singular matrix. But is this our final answer? No. Remember in the question, we were told that we should find the value of x that makes this matrix a singular matrix. So we are finding the unknowns here, like we find the unknowns normally in mass. But now this is a polynomial, not a normal quadratic expression that we could use maybe factorization or any other method to find the values of x. So the only way to solve this is to use what we call the factor theorem. Now, factor theorem says that if you have a polynomial, right, and you have a number, let's say a, if you impute a into the value of x, the unknown, and when you solve for it, you get zero. It means that x minus a is a factor of the given polynomial. So let's take this as a determinant to be a polynomial. So to apply factor theorem, we are going to use what we call trial and error method to test and see which number is going to satisfy this theorem, this factor theorem. So we could put minus 1, we could put 1, we could put 2, we could put minus 2 or whatever until you get 0. And when you get 0, it means that x minus that number you put is a factor of the polynomial. So when we test with x equal to 1, when we put 1 inside this polynomial, this expression, we have what? 1 cubed plus 7 times 1 squared minus 17 times 1 plus 7 and when you solve for it you find out that we are going to have 1 plus 7 minus 17 plus 9 collecting like that 9 plus 7 gives us 16 16 plus 1 gives us 17 and 17 minus 17 gives us 0 so we can rightly conclude that x minus 1 is a factor of this polynomial I want you to remember that this x minus 1 we've gotten is a factor of the matrix T. You will find the terminal, right? But they say in the question that we should find the smallest value of T, which means there are, there are other factors we need to find. And since this is a polynomial of degree 3, we are going to have three factors, right? But how do we get the other two factors? We've gotten one. We use what we call division of polynomials. So up next, we'll use this 
factors to divide this polynomial will arrive at the remaining two factors so that we can find the smallest value of f. Okay, so dividing the polynomial with the factor result which is x minus 1, we have what? Now division of polynomials, we arrange it like we are doing log division, right? Normally. Then we are going to bring the first value of the polynomial, which is x cubed, and we divide it with x. So x cubed divided by x will give us what? x squared, right? x cubed divided by x will give us x squared. So we'll write it here. Now x squared multiplied by this whole expression is what we put here. So x squared multiplied by x will give us x cubed, and x squared multiplied by minus 1 will give us minus x squared. So now I'll subtract x cubed minus x cubed will be 0. So that one is done. 7x minus minus x squared will be what? It will be like say 7 plus 1, which is going to give us 8. Then we'll write what? I forgot to put the x squared here. Then we'll write what? 8x squared. These other ones don't have anything we are doing. Just, let's just assume that the power of x here is 0. And this one is also 0 here. So bring everything down. And so we we'll now have what? 8x squared minus 17x plus 9. We'll continue our division process by bringing this first value, which is what? 8x squared, right? And 8x squared divided by x will give us what? 8x, right? Positive 8x. So write it up here. So we have 8x to now multiply everything here, which we will write out in this place. So 8x multiplied by x will give us 8x squared. 8x multiplied by minus 1 will give us minus 8x. Then we do our normal subtraction. 8x squared minus 8x squared will give us 0, so that is gone. We are left with what? Minus 17x minus minus 8x, which is what? It's like say minus 17x plus 8x. And this will give us what? Minus 9x. And then we are left with 9 here. We we'll bring down our 9. So we are now gotten to this stage. We will still repeat the process one more time so that x is gone totally. And so we we'll have what? We are going to have 9x. Okay, there is a minus. Minus 9x divided by this x we are getting from our divisor. In polynomials, we call this the divisor. We call this the dividend. And we call whatever we are getting up there the quotient, right? So, minus 9x divided by x will be what? Minus 9. So, as you can see, it is written up here. We are now going to use this to multiply this division. So, minus 9 times x will give us minus 9x. And minus 9 times minus 1 will give us plus 9. Finally, we subtract. And when we subtract, we are going to have minus 9x minus minus 9x. It's like saying what? Minus 9 plus 9. And that's going to be 0. So that is gone. And we also have that 9 minus 9 is 0. So at this point, we have 0. And this 0 is our remainder. And so by factor theorem, or remainder of factor theorem, when we have 0 as our remainder, it means that this quotient is a factor of the given polynomial. So we are going to pick this quotient right now. So we've gotten our two factors. Our two factors are what? x squared plus 8x minus 9 and x minus 1, which we got earlier. But we have to factorize this so that we get the three factors. Remember the polynomial of degree 3 that we are under. So factorizing this, we look for two numbers that when we when we add or subtract, we get 9x, and when we multiply, we get minus 9. Those two numbers should be 9x and minus x, which is 9 and 1, right? 9 and minus 1, rather. So, minus 9. After we group them together. So, what is common in this and this? It is x. When I bring out x, I'll be left with what? x here. And when I bring out x from this, I'll just be left with 9. What is common to both of them it is 1, right? So I'll bring out 1 outside, and we'll be left with x inside, and 
positive 9. So that when you multiply this, you get minus x and minus 9 as we have done here. And don't forget this other factor. So because these are, these are the same, I can now pick 1. And then this x minus 1, this is it. And then x minus 1 again, right? So we have two factors that are the same. We have x minus 1, which appears two times, and x plus 9, right? Now, the question says to find the smallest value of x. So the value of x here is going to be what? Minus 9. And the value of x here is going to be 1. So what is the smallest value of x? The smallest value of x in this case should be negative 9. So this concludes our little uh, video for today. We've seen the answer is minus 9. So I want you guys to like and subscribe if you are new to the channel.